I first fell in love with Zelda Breath of the Wild for its serene moments. The occasions when Link trotted along the Farren grasslands or unearthed treasure across the neighboring shoreline, all while scattered melodies quietly juxtaposed to Hyrule and Ruin. Breath of the Wild celebrated openness, and at nearly every juncture, its emergent qualities worked together to create a space wherein the player was granted all sorts of freedoms, including those which were more whimsical and lighthearted. That's why when I first watched the trailer for Breath of the Wild 2, which painted a picture of a more foreboding and claustrophobic adventure, I was struck with an immense curiosity and maybe a little trepidation. Will Zelda and Link's descent into the crypts beneath Hyrule Castle alter the major ways in which players experience the systems featured in Breath of the Wild? Is Ganondorf being revived by some sort of ancient evil, and are the Sheikah potentially responsible? I have so many questions, but more than anything, I am impressed with how Breath of the Wild 2's trailer uses thoughtful sound design and music to reinforce its themes of resurrection, horror, and the supernatural. It starts with a heartbeat. Resurrection and Incarnation are two themes which run their course through the Legend of Zelda series. However, where Breath of the Wild focuses on the resurrection of the champion hero, its upcoming sequel seems more interested in the awakening of an ancient evil. Breath of the Wild 2's trailer begins with the sound of a heartbeat, a bite faint as a strand of green energy slowly coalesces above what appears to be a Gerudo corpse. The heartbeat, which slowly increases in frequency, foreshadows the corpse's reanimation and the birth of a new evil. By the end of the trailer, the sound of the heart is beating consistently, signaling the success of the malevolent ritual. To further emphasize the concept of revival, the audio engineers responsible for Breath of the Wild 2's trailer included reversed audio, which is a brilliant technique that not only bolsters the creep factor of the entire presentation, but cleverly conveys the reversal of time and transcendence from death into life. If you're unaware, the process of reversing audio is pretty straightforward, and in this circumstance, the editor flipped the vocable, causing the tail end of the sample to be heard first via playback. Let's take a listen. While the vocals now seem like backwards gibberish, this technique layers even more tension and mystery over top the trailer's music, which is already filled with shrill stringed instruments that rise in pitch, causing the listener even more discomfort. The second way that we can utilize the reversed audio technique is to apply it to a reverb. If you're unaware, a reverb or reverberation is created when a sound wave is reflected multiple times over, simultaneously building up and decaying as the noise is absorbed by the various surfaces within a given space. In layman's terms, reverberation adds an echo to the end of an audio clip, and this natural effect can be reproduced and modified in a million different ways by music gear and computer plugins. So what's the reverse reverb anyway? Well, instead of rendering an echo behind the waveform, this technique places the echo prior to where the source emits its expected sound, thus creating an incredibly unnatural tone that's reminiscent of a ghost or other supernatural being. Here's an example of my voice that's being saturated by a traditional plate reverb. You can hear that it's fully immersed by the reverb, but it still sounds natural, as if I'm in a cave or other large space. And here's what my voice sounds like with the reverse reverb effect on it. It sounds really creepy, doesn't it? That's because both of these editing techniques are callbacks to classic horror sound design. In entertainment, perhaps one of the most scary noises is an out-of-tune piano, or even worse, a perfectly tuned piano being played by itself. One of the most formidable tactics that a sound designer can use to cause their audience discomfort is to make an everyday object sound out of place, out of time, or different from its natural tone. 
It's important to note that this isn't anything new in the video game space, but as an enthusiast, I'm endlessly fascinated by the process of making games. If we look back to 2017, Breath of the Wild sound designers employed this philosophy in the game's battle themes and the music featured in The Lost Woods by using syncopation to disturb the regular flow of rhythm in the song, thus rendering the listener's ear lost in the music. Time and time again, Zelda sound designer Hajime Wakai, along his team of wonderful composers, have demonstrated their sheer prowess for understanding the role that sound and music play in their Legend of Zelda franchise. Whether the experience mirrors the one I first fell in love with or completely changes the series formula once again, I'm eager for all that Breath of the Wild 2 will be. Thank you so much for taking time out of your week to watch something that I created. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to OK Beast. Since every one of our videos requires quite a lot of research and production, we don't upload weekly, so make sure that you hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next video. I'd like to give a special thanks to OK Beast patron Alex Felker, my friend, for sending me a new Elgato capture card uh, after my apartment recently flooded. This video would not have been possible without his immense generosity. So. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, it, it really meant the world that you sent that over to me. Uh, shout out to all of our Patreon producers who pledge $8 or more a month over at patreon.com slash okbeast. Your support means the world to us and enables us to continue doing cool things. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself, uh, head over patreon.com slash okbeast. Throw us a few dollars and in exchange, get access to cool perks and bonus content. And don't forget to listen to the OK Beast podcast, which is our weekly gaming and nerd culture show, which you can listen to every single Monday on iTunes, Spotify, and any other podcast app. If you're looking for more Breath of the Wild content, check out our video from 2017, during which we explain why the game was one of our favorites of all time. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.